The 911 Turbo. It's been an icon near the top of the Porsche family tree for 45 years now. Every one of the eight generations had blistering performance for its time, in a package that would be as happy nipping for a pint of milk as it would be tempting you into taking the scenic route home again. Since the original 930 back in 1975, the 911 Turbo has gained 400 horsepower and 400 kilos along with it. And things are now progressing so quickly that the new one can hit 60 miles an hour as quickly as the holy trinity of hypercars from just seven years ago. So, what does a car with such obscene acceleration actually drive like in the real world? Can you get anywhere near full throttle? Is it as usable every day as a 911 needs to be? Or have things just gone a little bit too far? Now before we get started, you probably recognise this car because it's been kindly loaned to us by SCD member Nigel, probably better known to you as Supercar Nigel. So, the new Turbo S, how do you replace one of the quickest cars in the real world? <laughs> you make it even quicker, obviously. Power is up from 580 horsepower to 650 and torque even trumps the GT2 RS at 800 newton meters. 0 to 60 for this cab model, 2.8 seconds. The coupe is even quicker at 2.7 and I've seen people do it even quicker than that. 0 to 125 miles an hour is a full second quicker than the 991.2 Turbo S and that car was rapid. Top speed, 205 miles an hour in a car that your nan could take to the shop as easily as a Golf. Having said that though, coming through the city to get here, it's more like a firmed up Bentley than a Golf. The ride's decent, it's comfortable, it's smooth, it's quiet. The optional Burmester stereo that Nigel has in this one is sublime. But when you get it out here, <laughs> it is so far from a Bentley. Yeah, don't think because it's comfortable they've gone soft on the turbo. Unreal bit of kit on the right road. It isn't the lightest sports car at 1,710 kilos for this cab model. That's 70 kilos more than the coupe and a smidge more than the old model as well, but God. if I got you to drive this and guess how much it weighed, it would be nothing like that. The now familiar four-wheel steering means the agility is ridiculous. The crypt pretty face bending even in damp conditions like today but at higher speeds, it's so stable. I'm gonna carry on a bit of a theme here because rather predictably, the Turbo S is pretty darn good. Traction, absolutely astonishing. Even on a day like today, second gear just digs in. Now we all know these turbo models don't make the most noise, because most of it's just sucked up by the turbos. But with each generation, there's a little bit more and this has more than the last as well, especially in the cabin. With the windows down and the roof down, you just get this hilarious whoosh. A nice little wastegate flutter as well. Now this one doesn't have the optional sports exhaust, purely because Nigel prefers the quad pipes on this model rather than the big twin ovals you get with the sports exhaust. Now I'm not sure how much different the exhaust makes, but I think it tips it a little bit more towards a GT2 RS with that sort of bassy note rather than just the wash of this, but I kind of like the wash. God, it is rapid. And obviously when it's rapid, you want serious brakes. Surprise, surprise, it has serious brakes. Carbon ceramics are standard on the Turbo S and I don't think you'll come near to using them properly on the road. Another thing you won't be shocked to hear, eight-speed PDK. That's pretty flawless as well. The one thing you don't get is a little kick in the back for a bit more character, but it does suit the car really well. So it's hardly a big surprise, is it? 992 Turbo S is objectively pretty much flawless. The most capable car I've driven, honestly, on the road. I can't see much getting near it. In the real world. 
Now one niggle that I always have with modern cars, especially big power four wheel drive ones, is there's just no reward at lower speed. It just sounds pretty good, this one. You can go up and down the box if you're not going too fast. Steering feels nice for a modern car, it's so direct. It just feels right when you steer this around a corner. There's, there's some pleasure in that at every speed. Sure that it could scream a little more, but you buy a GT3 if you want that and you want it to wiggle around behind you, don't you? For what this car's intended to do, it actually rewards at a lower speed more than I thought it would. There is one little thing that bugs me in the 992, though, and it is this gear selector. Now, I know people give it a stick, if you pardon the pun. But for me, it's fine when you're selecting gears, but the paddles move with the wheel. So when you're turning out of a corner, or if you're in a slide, for example, you want to pull another gear if you're nuts like me, you don't really know where the upshift paddle is. And it's nice, like in the old ones, to just be able to pull a gear with the paddle. And you can't do that with this, which is a little bit of an oversight for me. It can get a bit annoying when you're turning out of junctions because this gets to red line so quickly, you just bang straight into red line in first. Honestly, I think if you're having to resort to picking on the gear stick to find fault with a car, they've done a pretty good job with it. Try it with the roof down. Now, it's not the warmest of days, so I'm doing this for you guys, purely scientific. Oh, there's the wash. Dial it back to sports, you actually get the pops on the downshifts in sport. In sport plus, you don't get them. <laughs> wow. Now, don't get me wrong, it is still a blunt instrument, the Turbo S. You point and you shoot very fast. It's a refined blunt instrument. And for me, it gives you more back than the older generations of the Turbo did. In case I didn't quite convey just how sickeningly rapid the 992 Turbo S is, Nigel insisted I tried launch control. And I obliged. Okay, I obliged a few times. And a few times I hit the limiter in both first and second because the revs just climb so quickly your mind can barely keep up. I don't even think it'd be drivable as a manual. In typical turbo fashion though, all that power doesn't come at the expense of traction, usability and refinement. You really could use this car every day, and it speaks volumes that Nigel's already done 2,000 miles in this car in just a single month. Alright, if you want an ear bashing, screaming soundtrack, razor sharp throttle response and a more playful back end, a GT3 is still the way to go. But as an overall package, you have to tip your hat at how many areas the turbo excels in, and you can't help but be in awe at its performance and grip. I know you've heard it a thousand times and expected no less of it, but the 911 Turbo is still the king of everyday supercars. And with this 992 generation, Porsche haven't just made a fast car faster. No, they've made a brilliant car even better. A big thank you to Nigel for trusting us with his stunning Turbo for the day. Launch control and anything else will never feel quite the same again. Please remember to like and subscribe to keep up with all our supercar content. And let us know what you think of the 992 Turbo in the comments below.